We discussed free body diagrams. Now let's go ahead and let's go over our equilibrium equations that we're going to use when we're dealing with rigid bodies. Now what we're going to do is we're still going to have our equations we talked about before. So we still have the sum of the forces in the x direction has to equal zero and then the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. We used those equilibrium equations before when we were talking about particles. Now that we have rigid bodies, we're looking at things other than just a particle. We're looking at bigger systems. So if we go back to up to our old example, we've got all of this now. So it's not just a dot like before. Before we just had this and all of your forces acted through that point. So we didn't have any need to look at moments. But up here in these types of problems, if you look, we've got forces with distances between various points. So these are going to create moments. That means we have to add moments to our equilibrium equations. Now for equilibrium, we don't want any sort of movement unless we have constant velocity, but we're not looking at those cases. We're just looking at things that are still. So this means that the sum of the moments about a point, I'm just putting O here, those have to be equal to zero. All right, so now we've got three equations to use for equilibrium. Okay. Now we can also add two more sets of equations. All right, so you're not just limited to these three. You can kind of switch it up if you need to. If you wanted, you could look at the sum of the forces on some a axis, whatever a ax, whatever the a axis might be. You can set those equal to zero. All right, so that could be x, y, or z. All right, so pick an axis. You could sum up the forces in that direction. And then you could get two moment equations. You could find the sum of the moments about a point A, set it equal to zero. And then you could find the sum of the moments about another point, set that equal to zero. All right, so you could do that. Or if you wanted to just do moments, you could sum up the moments about three different points and set all of those equal to zero. Okay, so you're not just stuck with these three. Now, typically these are going to be the three that we always go to, but you have some other variations that you could use. So just keep that in mind when you're working through the problems. The main point here is we don't want translation. We don't want rotation, right? We're trying to prevent all of that. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go into the next example if I can get my pages separated. There we go. Okay, so here is this one. Example 42. Now, this one we've got several things going on here. We've got a couple moment that's produced here. The value is given. It's 4 kilonewton meters. And then at point B, what this is, this is going to be, this is a roller, should be a rocker. Let's change that. All right, so we've got a rocker here, and then we've got, what else do we got? We got a short link here between C and D, and we've got a collar right here. Okay, and we've got an applied force 2.5 kilonewtons, and that's being applied four meters to the right of point A. What we want to do is we want to draw our free body diagram and we want to find our reactions due to all of these different supports. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the collar, the rocker, and then the short link. Now we want this to be an equilibrium, so we have to use our equilibrium equations. Before we can get to those though, we have to draw the free body diagram. Free body diagram is always going to be your first step in these problems. 
So please don't try to get out of doing that step. You got to do it. Okay, so there's the outline of the body. So this with this. Now, let's look and see what we've got. First, go ahead and draw on all of the things that are obvious. So the 2.5 kilonewtons, we know that that's here. Right, it's at an angle of 60 degrees. We've got this couple moment right here, which is four kilonewton meters. And now we gotta figure out what to do with the rest of these supports. Okay. So now that we have that, let's see. Let's look at the rocker. The rocker is the easy one here. Remember the rocker, you can move back and forth, right? But you can't move up or down. That means that produces a force going up, right? That's at point B, so let's call it VY. Okay, so that gives us the force due to the rocker. And now let's look at the collar. So this collar, we've got this thing, it's attached to the collar. Now this collar can go up and down this way, right? Along this pole. But can it go this way? No, right? It can't go perpendicular to this pole, or whatever it is you want to call this. It can't move perpendicular to that. So that means there's a force being applied here, and it's going to be normal to this. So we're going to have an A right there. So let's call it A. And we've got a 45 degree angle here. That means this angle with the horizontal is 45 degrees. Okay. So again, what you have to do is you have to look at these supports, see what motion they allow and what motion they prevent. Now we've got those. Next over here, we've got this short link. Anytime you see something that says a short link, basically what you need to do is it's going to kind of act like a cable. It's going to pull this way, and we'll say FCD. Okay. So that's the force due to the short link. All right, so now you get that. Okay, so we've got that, and those are going to be our forces. So let's go ahead, and now we can do our equilibrium equations. Now we're just going to use the basic ones, the sum of the forces in the two directions, and then we'll find the moment about a point. All right. So let's go ahead and let's look at the forces in the x direction. So in x, we've got FCD, that's our force due to the short link. And then nothing here. What about here? This has one, right? This is going in the negative direction because it's pointing left. So we'll have negative 2.5 cosine 60. And then for this one, we've got A. Does this have an x component? It does. It's positive, so that'll be A cosine 45. We want that to equal 0. Right now, notice we have two unknowns here, so we can't solve for anything yet. So we'll just hang on to that equation. Now let's go to the y components. For our y components, We've got BY, it's going up. And we've got A that's pointing up. We need the Y component, so it's gonna be A sine 45, because that would give you that opposite side here. What else do we have? What about this one? This one's got a Y component. Is it positive or negative? That's right, it's negative. We're gonna have negative 2.5 sine 60. Now, are we done? We are. Set it equal to zero. Now again, look, we've got too many unknowns. We've got two equations now, but now we have three unknowns. So we still don't have enough equations. That means we need one more equation. That's where that moment equation comes in. 
And for this, you just need to pick a point that's going to be easiest to use when you're finding moments. Basically, that means you need to pick a point that has a lot of forces going through it, if you can do that. So I'm just going to pick C. And I'm going to pick C because it's got this force going through it. It also has BY going through it. So I'm going to get rid of two forces there. Okay. It might have been better to pick point B here, actually. But I didn't do that. So let's go ahead and pick C. And I'm going to say counterclockwise is positive. All right, so if we do that, we've got our moment due to this force. Now I'm going to break it up into the components. And that way we can find the moment due to each of the components. All right, so let's start with the A force. We're going to have A cosine 45. So that's going to be the X component. So I need to find that vertical distance. I need to move that force up through C. That's going to be 3. Is that going to be positive or negative? That one should be positive, right? Because the force is acting down here. So that's going to try to swing this this way about C. Now let's do the other component of A. That'll be the vertical component that's pointing upward. The force is A sine 45. Now the force is upward, so our distance needs to be horizontal. What's the distance we need to get that vertical force to go through C? That's basically from here over to here, so that's 10. Now this one, is it positive or negative? Hopefully you said negative, because if the force is pointing up, remember to be looking at C, it's trying to swing this thing around C in a clockwise direction. So that's negative. And now we've got the two components for 2.5. So first let's look at 2.5 cosine 60. And that's going to be the force that's acting right here. This is a horizontal force, so we need a vertical direction. That distance here is going to be 3. And it's going to be negative. All right. So that'll produce a clockwise rotation. And last force for this, we've got a Y component, which is acting in that direction. So the force, put it down here, is 2.5 sine 60. The distance we need is from here over to here. So that's 6. And is that one positive or negative? Hopefully you said positive. Because if we're at C and we're allowing this to rotate, it's going to try to pull this this way. So that's positive. And last thing. Can you think of what else needs to go in there? Let's look over here. We took care of this. We took care of this. This goes through C. We don't have to worry about it. This goes through C. Don't worry about that. But what about this? This is a couple moment, right? We have to put that in here. It should be positive or negative. That's right. It should be negative because it's drawn going in the clockwise direction. All you need to do here is put negative 4 because this is already a moment. So no need for a distance here. Now we're going to set that equal to 0. Now if you go through and simplify all that, you get negative 4.95a plus 5.24 equals 0. Now look what we got. We have one equation with one unknown. Finally, we can solve this one for A, and then we can use that again up in here to get our other unknowns. So A here is 1.059 kilonewtons. All right. Now you're going to take this value, plug it back up into these two equations. So here and then here, and then you'll solve for F, C, D, and then B, Y. Let's see if we call this 1 and this 2. Then from equation 1, you'll get F, C, D is 0.501 kilonewtons. 
and then from 2, which is this one here, you'll be able to get by. So that's 1.42 kilonewtons. Now you've found all of your reaction forces. Okay, and notice they're all positive. Since they're all positive, that means we chose the correct directions when we drew these out on the free body diagram. All right. So that's the end of that one. We'll pick it up in the next video with another example. See you then.